I want to welcome you all to the Montana Harvest of the Month Cooking Up Harvest of the Month webinar today. This is part of the Wednesday webinar series that's sponsored by School Nutrition Programs in Helena. And the funding for this event is from a 2017 Team Nutrition Grant that was awarded to the Office of Public Instruction. So it looks like we're a pretty small group today. And with that being said, it's also a good time for us to um, just give a shout out to the school food service staff that are working so hard to serve meals to students all over our state during this time of um, high stress and um, stress for our health and our jobs. But um, I think it's really an important time that kids are eating really well so that they can stay healthy and their immune system is um, as strong as it can be. So while we don't have a lot of people on today, we are recording this. So it will be available for people to watch after. And that'll be a nice opportunity to get the recipes and um, do some professional development when you have time to do that. So the first thing we like to do is ask you all to sign in for the attendance today. And if you could type into the chat box your name, your school district, and would also like to know what is your favorite Montana grown food? Your favorite Montana food that you like to eat. Looks like we have a lot of good representation from our school nutrition program specialists today. So thank you specialists for being here to help answer questions. And Aubrey Roth is here, I'm Sarah Penick, Gretchen Groves, Katie Bark. So we're pretty heavy on um, state agency staff, but we all love this topic and we hope that you guys do too. Um, today, um, our presenters, I'm pleased to have Sarah Penix join us. She's with Montana Team Nutrition and she's our Farm to School Vista service member and she's just been great. She's doing a lot of stuff to help with our social media, the Farm to School Facebook page, and she's been doing a lot of training on technology for all of our staff. Um, we also have Jay Stagg with us today. So thank you, Jay. He's the Food Service Director at Whitefish Public Schools. He's also one of our outstanding school food service peer educators. And he has been doing Harvest of the Month and Farm to School for quite a long time, and he's excellent at what he does. So he'll be sharing that information with us. Uh, we have three simple goals or things that we'd like to do on this webinar today. And those are easy tips to get started with Harvest of the Month. Um, ways to introduce or tips or techniques that you can incorporate some Harvest of the Month foods into your monthly menus. And then discover how Harvest of the Month recipes can be used in your main line, salad bars, or grab and go menus to really increase some variety in your menus. So let's just take a look. I just want to glance through the chat. Um, did we have any favorite Montana foods that came up that could be a Harvest of the Month food? We did, Molly. We have flathead cherries, beef, winter squash, another beef, another flathead cherries. <laughs> so all of those are good. I love all of those things. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to launch a poll question for you here. Of the people that are on the webinar with us today, I'm curious how many have you have participated in the Harvest of the Month program? So um, let me get this poll up for you. So if you are currently participating in Harvest of the Month, you'll choose yes. If you are not participating at all, but you have in the past, sit, let us know you have in the past, or if you are not, participating, let us know that. How many years has Harvest of the Month been around, Aubrey? We piloted it in um, 2015 okay. and then launched in the 16-17 uh, school year. Okay, so yeah. it's almost coming up on five years. Okay, so let's see how many of us 
are using Harvest of the Month this year that are on the call. Can you guys see these poll results? Looks like 67% are currently using and one is not. So hopefully we'll inspire everyone to um, sign up to um, use the Harvest of the Month program. You can modify it to meet your needs and it's really adaptable. Okay. All right, I'll, I'm gonna turn it over now to Sarah. She's going to walk us through just to give us a quick review of what the Montana Harvest of the Month program is. All right, will you, um, next slide, Molly, please. So Montana Harvest of the Month is a program that brings together the farm to school core elements in an easy to use framework. The goal of Harvest of the Month is to support healthy Montana children and adults and support Montana's farmers, ranchers, processors, and food businesses. Next slide, please. Each month, a different Montana grown or raised food is featured. Our goal is to change the calendar every year and add one new item each year. Brassicas, the um, plant family that includes cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and many others is new this year. Next slide, please, Molly. Harvest of the Month is currently open to K through 12 schools and after school programs, summer food service programs, early care and education, such as preschools and daycares, healthcare institutions and businesses and communities, um, including grocery stores and food pantries. Next slide, please. Participating sites will do the following four things and I will dive into those now. Next slide, please. First, um, participating sites will form a team. Um, it can include parents, producers, community organizations, MSU extension agents, SNAP-Ed educators, and more. Forming a team is done during registration, and it must include an administrator, school nutrition professional, and educator. But we recommend including community organizations, SNAP-Ed, and extension, as well as other community members like um, parents and students. Um, and then a site must have a team lead who serves as the main point of contact. Next, participating sites will showcase um, Montana Harvest of the Month each month. Um, with Harvest of the, with um, serving Harvest of the Month food in school meals, um, there is a variety of producers that um, schools and sites can procure from. Here is an example of Western Montana's grower, Growers Cooperative and Shredded Beets, which are February's Harvest of the Month food. Here is an example of how um, those beets look in school meals. Um, this is an example from Whitefish School District and the meal features beet ketchup and beet hummus. Next, um, in June, Polson School District sent students bagged lunches featuring locally sourced leafy greens and homemade vinaigrette to continue Harvest of the Month during unprecedented summer meals. So with adding the flyer in the meals, um, they continued um, the promotion of Harvest of the Month. Next, participating sites will um, uh, have educational activities. And here's an example of, a of an educational activity from Bozeman. Um, activity suggestions are provided in the classroom by its handouts, um, but sites can do whatever education activities make sense for them. Um, it could be as simple as reading fun facts or um, showing one of the Harvest of the Month videos available on our YouTube channel. Next, sites um, will have taste tests each month. So here's an example of Livingston doing taste test voting for um, the Harvest of the Month food carrots. Taste tests can be conducted in the cafeteria or classroom or whatever works for your site. It works best to pair taste tests with an educational activity to engage students. Um, and sites should use the tried it, liked it, loved it voting method. This collect, 
collecting votes can be done this way and many other ways um, through charts and stickers or tally marks. During COVID school closures, some sites did taste tests at home by sending home information and taste tests. Here, students in Lewistown sample local beef sticks for beef month in May. Next, participating sites will promote harvest of the month. Um, you can do this through uh, the posters. Um, Harvest of the Month materials are sent to sites upon registration, but if your site is interested in more Harvest of the Month posters or are not yet registered, um, po posters are available for purchase through MSU Extension. Here is an example of a mixed um, promotional methods, and this is um, an excellent example of the provided materials and artwork from staff and students um, to creatively promote Harvest of the Month. Next. Um, and then the Harvest of the Month materials. Upon signing up for Harvest of the Month, um, sites are um, provided with three handouts for each food um, include, that include fun facts, agricultural and gardening information, and cooking information. The Cafeteria Bites handout is for school nutrition professionals and includes recipes, quantity recipes, with National School Lunch Program crediting information. Next, the classroom bites are also included, um, and those are for educators, and they include lessons and recipes for sampling. Lastly, the classroom bites, um, or lastly, Harvest at Home handouts are one page front and back handouts, great for sending home um, or including in newsletters to engage parents and community members in um, the Harvest of the Month activities at the sites. Next slide. Here is a comprehensive list of the Harvest of the Month digital materials. Registered sites get access to many electronic resources as listed here. Um, and we will be providing the Winter Squash Cafeteria Bites handout and recipes handouts um, in the Google Docs folder so you can all get a better feel for the Harvest of the Month materials. And winter squash is our November featured food. Um, available to the public, um, there is, we have a playlist of Harvest of the Month um, videos for each food, and that includes a visual recipe. Um, and again, these are publicly available, so um, all people can use them. Lastly, um, new sites can register via the registration form on the Montana Farm to School website and existing sites just have to complete an end of year report to re-register for the next school year. And that's it, I'll turn it back to you, Molly. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so this might be a good time, and if Aubrey wants to um, jump in too, just to, for those of you who have never done Harvest of the Month before, um, we would really encourage you to register. You can sign up at any time, any month throughout the school year, and you can really, especially this year, do Harvest of the Month however it works best for you. While we still recommend that you do form a team with your administrator and a teacher, um, if this year you choose to form a team, but you are doing most of the things in the cafeteria, that's great. Or if you have an after school program that would be interested in um, doing some of the educational components, that's great too. So um, you can really mold it to whatever best meets your needs. And there's so many great resources. So um, if you have questions, please do contact Aubrey Roth and her information will be upcoming in a few slides here. Okay, so why would a school want to try Montana Harvest of the Month recipes? Well, um, 
We know this year has been challenging, so anything you can do to help keep your menus fresh and exciting, um, colorful, eye-appealing, with a locally grown Montana connection, I think local foods and from scratch cooking really have a feel-good element to them. And we all know that kids, teachers, families really need some feel good in their lives right now. So um, it's kind of a way to give customers something to look forward to, a way to introduce students to new foods in positive ways. Um, for those of you who really are proud of the from scratch cooking that you're doing, this is a um, natural fit for you because um, you're used to cooking from scratch. If you're a program that wants to do more from scratch cooking, this is a nice way to like dabble your feet and start into doing a little more from scratch by doing one, two, or three um, recipes of a food each month. Um, it's also a nice way to support your local farmers, ranchers, or agriculture producers. And with COVID changing our food system stream, local sourcing might be easier now than going through a large supplier. So don't be afraid to reach out to some of those um, local farmers in your area and see what they have to offer you. One nice thing that fits really dovetails in nicely is a lot of the harvest of the month foods also pop in to this vegetable subgroup categories. So doing some of the harvest of the month foods or recipes can really help you with your menu planning in meeting some of these vegetable subgroups. So I know sometimes we kind of get stuck in a rut where we often like do a lot of carrots or tomatoes for red orange and we tend to do that over and over or maybe for dark green we see a lot of like romaine lettuce or spinach when there's lots of other options out there. So by doing a harvest of the month recipe or a food, it makes it more fun and a little more enticing. So um, dark green, vegetable subgroups, things like the brassicas fall into that nicely or any of the leafy greens. Now, I didn't even know what the word brassicas was <laughs> until September when this was our harvest of the month. So does anybody, can anybody just tell us quickly what foods are in the brassicas group? I wrote it down so I wouldn't remember, <laughs> so I wouldn't forget. Yeah, some of the foods in brassicas are um, uh, Brussels sprouts, rutabaga, turnips, um, lots of those carn cruciferous veggies too. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I know that some of, I think it was um, Hinsdale School said one of their kids' favorite things was roasted Brussels sprouts. So. Um, that might be a good one to try. Um, there's some cabbage slaw recipes that we'll be sharing with you, and then also some leafy green recipes. For red orange, squash, sweet potatoes are so versatile. They're also a harvest of the month food along with carrots, which are really fun to grow and pick. Um, tomatoes aren't a harvest of the month food, but if you live in a community where they're growing a lot of tomatoes, that might be an easy one for you to feature. And then Montana grows a good amount of lentils and chickpeas, which is a really nutrition little powerhouse and inexpensive that you can add to your menus as well. So within this calendar of fresh local foods and colorful things to help us meet the vegetable subgroups. There's lots of variety to choose from to really help you keep your menus um, exciting and enticing. So we would love to, I'm gonna launch another poll. And within this, I'm wondering which of these Montana grown foods you would like to serve more in your school food program. So. I don't want everybody to pick like all 10, so pick, please pick your top five. So you're going to be picking your top five foods that you would like to serve more often, and you may need to use the sidebar to scroll up and down to see all of the choices. There should be 10 choices, and I'd love it if you could pick your top five.
Good job, you guys. We'll keep it open for a few more minutes, so. Okay, I'll just give it a, about another 30 seconds to make sure everybody's had a chance to pick their top five Montana grown foods that like to serve more often. Okay, I hope everybody's had a chance to answer this. I'm going to end this poll and then share the results. Okay, so it looks like, huh, this is the first time I've done polling, so bear with me here, please. It looks like the red lines are the highest total. So of those of you who voted, it looks like 83% would like to serve more cherries and apples. 83% would like to choose serve more brassicas or leafy greens. 83% would like to serve more lentils and chickpeas. And 83% would like to serve bison. And then the blue lines are 33% would like to do more winter squash, 17% carrots, 33% beets, 50% grains, 17% beef and dairy. So um, I think this is really exciting because what uh, one thing, I guess, from a nutritionist and a menu planning standpoint, I love it that you really rated high the fruits and vegetables and the lentils and chickpeas. So things that were really um, maybe short in your menu, but are really important to, um, for a balanced diet. This looks really great. This will also help us provide more recipes to help you guys meet these goals. So. If anybody has recipes that are particularly good that you know your kids like for any of these items, if you send to me, I will include them in the Google Drive for this webinar. Or you could also share them on Montana Lunchline. All right, thank you guys for doing that. Okay, I'm going to turn it over now to Jay Stagg. This is really where the rubber hits the road. So he'll share with you things that he has done in his schools to really um, get kids invested in learning about and also taste testing and enjoying um, meals with these Montana foods. So I'll stop sharing my screen and Jay can start sharing his. Looks good, Jay. And then I unmuted, so I think you can hear me good. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> Let me find the. Well, thanks for having me. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Harvest of the Month um, and Team Nutrition and MSU. Um, when Molly asked me to put together a slideshow, the one thing I really wanted to do was try to come up with a, a picture of a Harvest of the Month item and then a picture of some students doing something with it, and then how it might appear on the plate and possibly a recipe. So I think uh, I did pretty good on most of them. Um, some of them didn't work out that great. One being uh, the, uh, the cabbage, the <laughs> brassica. Um, Basically, uh, all I got was a picture of cabbage. Um, if I was to add other pictures here, it would be making coleslaw. Um, we have a high school um, ag group right now making sauerkraut. Unfortunately, I did not get pictures of those. Um, so quickly moving right along um, to apples. One thing uh, we really, I think I pride ourselves in is getting as much local food as I can. This is a picture of local, local apples from Moss Farms and Plums. Um, this is a 
This is our amazing farm to school educator, uh, Whitney Pratt, in classroom doing the simple applesauce recipe. Um, if you'll notice that cart, it's, uh, it's one of the, it worked out really well, a very cheap addition to being able to go to classrooms to, to do these cooking uh, classes um, instead of them having to come down to the cafeteria. Just a simple little plug-in hot plate and stove um, makes, it, makes it nice and easy. Um, I think this, is, uh, this must be pajama day, but um, a student enjoying the simple applesauce recipe and there it is. Thank you, Harvest of the Month recipes. We've used a lot of them, they're great. Um, and to move right along, uh, also with apples, kind of promote the Montana Crunch Time, which is tomorrow. And I think we're actually doing ours on Friday. So that kind of shows the leniency and you don't have to exactly follow dates. I know Aubrey probably would like us to, um, but we're in a hybrid mode right now. So ours works out better on Friday. So we're having our two o'clock crunch time on Friday. And this is some middle schoolers enjoying their crunch time. This picture shows, so we recently were able to build a greenhouse. Um, this shows an outside bed. Um, and this is an example. You can't see the bed next to it, but it actually has uh, beans, uh, beans and more squash. This symbolizes the three sisters lesson that we do every year with a couple different grades, um, kind of a indigenous recipe a great little lesson um, from, from one of our production gardens. This is a picture of the squash that we were able to harvest. Along with, uh, we also have, we also harvest quite a few, maybe up to about a thousand pounds of potatoes from our production garden every year. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to carry that production garden on because we're expanding buildings, but, but hopefully. And here's the Three Sisters salad recipe. Um, there's a lot of lessons that can go along with this recipe. Um, it's really fun for the kids, they really enjoy it. And here's another example of a squash um, lesson, uh, delicata uh, squash smiles. And the recipe also. So each year in our production garden, um, pretty for the most part, uh, seventh graders, which the school is about seven blocks away, but seventh graders in the um, spring will come plant the squash and potatoes. And then when they come back as eighth graders, they harvest it, which is a really nice way to incorporate our middle school, which like I said, isn't right next to the garden, but it kind of turns into a great little, uh, they usually do it during gym class. They ride their bikes over, they plant, they harvest. It's, uh, it's nice to get them involved, even though they're a little bit of ways. Um, and another example of uh, summer squash, the summer squash salad. You notice in the background, the great harvest of the month poster. So moving on, uh, this is another picture of our raised beds outside of our greenhouse ag area. Um, students are harvesting carrots here. There's a student eating the carrot salad. He seems to like it. And the carrot salad recipe. And one of my favorites, and I think the, something that we've worked a lot on in Montana is uh, really trying to get more beef, local beef into the schools. So we have for years have been buying ground beef from uh, Lower Valley Processing. 
Um, it's been a very, it's been simple. They did, they did most of the work, but most recently we started contra contracting with a local rancher to grow our own. And uh, last year we purchased seven, seven cows. And since they are organic and grass fed, um, we had to offset the price a little bit. I think once, once all processing was said and done, the ground beef came in at almost $8 a pound. And obviously schools can't afford that. So what I would do is uh, I, hold, I held a sale and sold the nicer cuts for market value to offset the beef and got it down to between three and four dollars a pound. So I, I basically ended up with about 1,200 pounds of local ground beef that I could afford. Here's, an ex here's some examples of us uh, sauteing the beef off in a tilt skillet and to the right, what it might look like on a menu. Um, just a simple taco. And actually that's uh, Marsh's um, beef taco recipe. And if you notice, I don't have too many examples in the slideshow with lentils, but this does include lentils and refried beans. And we also use some of the other cuts that might not have sold as well during the sale. These are round steaks. Um, we have a really nice uh, culinary department at our high school now, just as of a year ago. So I was able to give them some of the, some of the items that didn't sell. They were able to learn braising techniques and, and appetizing plating techniques. And everyone's favorite beets. Um, <laughs> there's one of our students harvesting some beets. Uh, if you can see here, just uh, the simple the beet hummus recipe that everyone loves. Uh, I I kind of like the the Bozeman's recipe. I did not include that here. I'm not sure why, but uh, the Bozeman's recipe for hummus beet or beet hummus um, is really really good. And this shows it just getting made. This is something we have every day at the high school. It's our hummus platter, uh, just in a bowl. Meets all the components. And then this is, you've seen this slide before. Sarah showed it just a little bit ago. And this shows how we would use it at the K through eight level with a smaller, a smaller beet hummus platter. And like I said, beet ketchup. Um, you'd be surprised, it tastes just like ketchup. <laughs> Back to the raised beds. Um, this is just showing a picture of some kale. And the ingredients that would make up a kale salad. The kale salad recipe. And once again, a picture of, uh, this is actually a kale salad recipe where it's really fun with younger kids because they're able to tear it apart themselves, put it into a Ziploc bag and basically with some lemon, they're basically just smashing it and hitting it against the table to try to make those fibers a little more, um, fib less fibrous. Once again, harvest of the month kale poster in the background. And this is another really popular thing. So this is a, a kale potato hash that we've done. Um, it's them just sauteing it off like in the tilt skillet, um, putting it into hotel pans and uh, the kids really seem to like it. I don't know if it's the amount of cheese that we put on top of it, but they seem to really like it. And the recipe. Are um, I've been getting there's a local hydroponic uh, tomato and cucumber grower that we get all our tomatoes from. This is kind of just showing how they come. Um, we get it 
uh, three or four flats a week. Uh, typically, not now, but they would all go on the salad bar. And then uh, if we were not to use them, then we could either puree them or turn them into something else very easily. And this is a picture of inside our greenhouse with our wall of tomatoes. Um, I don't know, it's kind of, this is uh, our farmer, Farmer Chris, uh, a, new, a new employee. If you notice the basil along the bottom of the tomatoes, a nice, nice companion plant, if you're ever to be able to grow inside. On the, the picture on the right there is him holding, uh, he really likes to grow different, different kinds of tomatoes, that being a pineapple tomato. And you can see it there, why it's a pineapple tomato. You can see the segments on the inside really do look like a, like a pineapple. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily taste like that, but uh, great flavor. That's local beef. Um, we have uh, the culinary team at the high school also patties out our beef for us. So we're able to offer a nice, nice local beef and local tomato um, thing. So even though we have lots of different areas in our district to show how things are grown or to give different visuals, we really rely on uh, our local farmers and ranchers. Um, these are, this is just a list of different farmers that I deal with and uh, that we get things from. Um, the Two Bear Farm is basically our, our carrot provider. Getman and Moss Farms are our apples and our plums. Um, and then uh, the Wicked Good Farm, it's a great little distributor of local food. And they like to go around and pick up anything that's available in the valley, pretty much within about a maybe a 50 mile radius and then offer it to restaurants. Um, so it's really important to connect with your local farmer, your local rancher, um, just to fill in, because the areas we have around school just, they obviously, just like all schools, they, you can't provide enough to do a full menu for a medium-sized district, so that's why we use them. Um, we also, just a quick, Shout out to our local composter. Uh, we do compost. We're in the process of getting our own compost bins going. Um, so hopefully it's, it's still worth it uh, if you have a local composter to be able to use them. Um, and this is the contact information. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shout out. And thank you. Thank you, Jay. Gosh, I love your real life pictures with all the kids and the beautiful food. Does anybody have a question right now for Jay? You could unmute yourself or put it in the chat box. Can we put Jay's phone number back up again? Sure. Thank you. Um, I think I had it, Jay, on this very first slide it's right at the bottom here jay's number is 406-862-8620 extension 249 and his email is listed there too I love that picture of the little girl in her, in her dotted pajamas because her little freckles just match her pajama dots. Jay, I want to thank you for your time in putting together that um, PowerPoint for us and sharing your recipes. Any questions for Jay before we move on? Hi, this is Katie Bark. Jay, thank you so much. Um, it's, so, it's so inspiring to see this today because it is starting to snow here and just, um, I know it's a challenge to just prepare meals this year and to see this is amazing. 
I had a question on your composting. You know, that's the one thing I, I keep hearing from people about the waste this year because many schools can only do serve because they may be, you know, doing classroom or just, um, so I just wondered, um, any, like, was it, did another um, student group or who really took on the composting or was it yours and um, just any comments? I mean, I feel like at the next school nutrition conference that we're able to do, it be need to really learn more about composting and just, you know, recycling to help with uh, waste. Yeah, it was, um, so there was a, a local person who graduated from high school maybe five or six years ago who started a composting, um, a food composting company, I guess. Um, and she is the one who really approached us and offered, uh, offered her services. They provide the bins, they pick it up. I mean, it does cost money, not, not very much. I can't, tell you exactly um i think it was about maybe a hundred and hundred dollars a month for picking up at three different schools twice a week um you know there's we, we did all the the plate waste challenge and it never got to the point of us necessarily seeing a a reduce in cost in garbage pickup but it was just kind of the right thing to do. We knew we wanted to do something on our own eventually. Um, now that we've built, we've built these enormous worm bins that just as of a couple of days ago are ready to go. So our farmer, Chris, will now kind of take that over. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it was really simple to set up. I didn't have to do a whole lot. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Jay? I have a question. This is Aubrey. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jay. That, those were great photos, and it's so fun to learn about all the great things that you're doing. Um, could you share maybe one of the foods that you've had that has taken a little bit of time for the students to get used to um, that you may have had to feature multiple times or do you feel like they've kind of taken to new recipes and new foods especially like beets um, easily i think maybe the the beet hummus took a little bit a while to uh to get them to accept, but I mean, it tastes so good that it didn't take long. Um, you know, I probably don't incorporate harvest of the month items into the menus as much as I should. I've focused, we focused kind of on classroom teachings, I think, um, to try to introduce them to new things in a smaller environment. Um, we definitely, we, I mean, we definitely use a lot of Harvest of the Month items on the menu, but I think in the small, in the small environment, when they're sitting next to their friend, and I really think that goes a long way into introducing new things. Um, but I guess I'm not really answering your question, am I? But uh, <laughs> um, I think that's a great point that having those different environments and different opportunities um might make them a little more receptive especially when it comes around and is featured on the menu um, right. in that form or a different form so i think yes you did answer my question in a way okay all right let's um let's keep pressing on i want to tell everybody thank you for putting all this great stuff into the chat box and thank you, Jay. That was great. Okay, we have about 15 minutes before we finish up here. So I think we'll just um, step right along here. Uh, I wanted to share based on 
things that I have heard about going on in other schools that are doing harvest of the month that are really successful with it. Just give you some really simple tips on how you can get started with it and how easy it can really be. So um, four simple tips are to start small, um, offer as a taste test, then maybe put a harvest of the month food on the salad bar or as a side dish and then feature it in an entree later that month. So if you glance over to the right, um, do, I don't know if any of you know Anna Holloway. She's the food service director at Gardner School and she's awesome. And she has, this is her method of um, using harvest of the month. At the beginning of the month, like this month or the month she did was beets. So at the beginning of the month, she puts a little bit of the harvest of the month vegetable in something that her students already like. So she did cooked mashed beets and put them in a brownie recipe. And then about one week later, she roasted some beets as a side dish and put those on the salad bar. So if you are not doing a full salad bar right now, you could just offer um, roasted beets as a choice or just put a little scoop in with a salad or as a little side dish. Um, and that might be an option. And then after she did it in the brownies, did it as a little side dish, then she did beet as a main dish or as a featured side dish. And I think for this, she actually did like a borscht soup, like a beet soup recipe. So I think it's creative in how she approaches it in a really a simple and a non-threatening way and kind of builds on that concept. So that might be something that you could try to model. Um, jumping back to the left, after you start small, you could try, have the students try that food in a positive way. And I will include the tried it, liked it, loved it taste test method in the Google Drive. Really simple way that students can try it, like it, or love it. And what is not there, I did not like it. So um, it's a positive spin on all three of those choices. One of our staff, I don't know if it was Aubrey, came up with Taste It Tuesday. So if you use Harvest of the Month consistently, either a Harvest of the Month Monday or once a month do a Taste It Tuesday, that gives um, everybody something to look forward to. And then promoting those local foods as much as you can using signage on the main line, which could be something as simple as a handwritten note with the name of the food and the farmer who, who grew it or using the monthly menu templates. So either of those are good options. I know Clay put the menu template link in the chat box and you can find that in maps under application and download forms. And these are great. There's um, 10 months worth of menu templates you can use all year long. So tips or techniques to incorporate some of these foods into your menu. Um, I don't know how many of you have tried roasting vegetables. I see in the chat box, Tura is roasting Brussels sprouts. Um, but roasting is an awesome way to um, really enhance the flavor, improve the texture of a um, vegetable, and really yields a nice product. They smell really good when you're roasting them. So we will provide to you some of these um, really good recipes, a big red beet and barley salad recipe, roasted broccoli. Um, you could also roast chickpeas. Um, if anybody knows um, Ed Christensen from Missoula, King, otherwise known as King Kale, this is his famous kale chips recipe. And then we have a, just a short video to show you on how to roast vegetables. And I'll turn it over to Sarah um, she'll launch that video for us. And I want to credit, we had two wonderful dietetic interns um, create this video in the Hannon Teaching Kitchen on campus. So um, we're thankful that they're so efficient with their video skills. So we'll pull up this video for you. Hi everyone, today we will be demonstrating the process of roasting vegetables. Roasting your vegetables brings out the natural sugars that are in the vegetables, giving you a better flavor while maintaining many of the valuable nutrients that they contain. Roasting vegetables also allows more space on the stove top. Having all of your ingredients and supplies out and ready will help save you time while preparing the meal. This is called mise en place, meaning everything in one place. 
The first recipe we are going to show you today is roasted broccoli. We modified our broccoli recipe for less people, so as you can see, we will have a lot less than 8 cups of broccoli. First, preheat the oven. For a conventional oven, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. For a convection oven, preheat the oven to 375 degrees. While the oven is preheating, cut up the broccoli that is called for in the recipe. When cutting the broccoli, make sure to cut it into bite-sized uniform pieces to ensure even cooking. After the broccoli is cut, add the oil, salt, and pepper into the bowl with the broccoli. After all ingredients are added, mix thoroughly so that the broccoli is coated evenly. Once all of the broccoli is coated evenly, spread out onto a sheet pan. Once the oven is preheated, bake for 20 minutes or until the broccoli is tender. Bon the next recipe that we will be demonstrating is the Big Red Roasted Beet and Barley Recipe. This recipe is featured in February when the Montana Harvest of the Month is beets. You can also use locally grown barley in this recipe. First, let's gather all of our ingredients to ensure that we are efficient with our time. It may not look like all that much food, but that's because we scaled the recipe down for six servings. Next, start boiling the water for the barley. Once the water begins to boil, pour in the barley. First, start by cutting off the bottom part of the squash and taking out all of the seeds. Then peel off the skin from the rest of the squash. After you have finished peeling the squash, then carefully dice the squash while using proper knife skills to avoid injuries. To make it easier to cut and peel the squash, consider putting it in the microwave for a few minutes and allowing it to cool to make it easier to cut and peel. You don't have to peel the beads if you don't want to. Just scrub them well under cold water and this will help you save time and be more efficient. As you can see, we use two different types of beets. You can also use the Golden Varieties or Kyoja if you prefer. After the squash and beets are diced, mix the oil, salt, and cinnamon together. Once it's mixed, divide by pouring a third over the squash, a third over the beets, and saving a third to put over the barley. Once you have mixed and coated the squash and beets evenly, pour the squash and beets on separate pans to avoid having the beets turn the squash pink and roast at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and then 350 degrees for 25 minutes in a conventional oven and 375 degrees for 10 minutes and 325 degrees for 25 minutes in a convection oven. Done cooking. Rinse it and mix in the last one third of sauce. You may want to consider adding a small amount of allspice seasoning to the barley while it's still warm to enhance the flavor of the barley. We will now prepare the meal. Evenly spread the barley across the plate. Once the squash and beets are done cooking, layer them on top of the barley. The recipe states to mix all of the ingredients together, but we chose to layer it for better eye appeal. Next, sprinkle the sunflower seeds over the top of the other ingredients. For the finishing touch, 
sprinkle some cheese on top. Enjoy. This is a hearty salad, which can be served as a standalone side dish or as a vegetarian wrap sandwich option. For more information about the Harvest of the Month or the recipe, You're Molly, muted. I think you're on mute. It. Oh, <laughs> I was. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Can you see my slide again? So we'll be providing to you a variety of recipes in the Google Drive folder. Um, I'll make sure I include Jay's recipes and then those listed here. But if you do have recipes that you're using with Montana Foods that your students like, we'd love it if you would share those with us. So if you email those to me, I will share out with everyone else. Um, we do want to just remind you that crunch time is tomorrow and you can crunch it anytime tomorrow or as Jay said, even as the week goes on. So we'd love your help in helping us win the Montana or the Mountain Plains Crunch Off with like six other states around the Midwest. And if you do do a crunch time event, please register your crunch at this link before October 31st. And then I'd also like to invite you to attend this coming Tuesday, October 27th is the Farm to Tray virtual tour that will be um, led by Ginger Buchanan as one of our farm to school coaches. And that'll be great. So if you're able to participate in that, please do. Um, we're looking forward to the rescheduled Montana Farm to School Summit will be in August, this coming August of 2021 in Helena. And um, would love if you're doing something farm to school related that you'd like to share. I know they'd love to have workshop proposals be submitted. So if you're interested in attending and presenting, let Aubrey know. We'd like to give a quick shout out to the winners of the Montana School Eats photo contest. This is a photo contest sponsored by Montana No Kid Hungry and Montana Team Nutrition. And I realize the slide is busy, but I wanted to highlight um, Power Schools up here on the top right was first place for the indigenous foods with their heirloom painted mountain cornbread, chili and salad with beans and mushrooms. And then the local foods, first place was Target Range here on the lower left. They had a curry carrot soup and an Aloha carrot muffin with their salad bar. So um, that looks really tasty and really colorful. And the runner up for the local foods was Lone Peak High School in Big Sky. They're here in the middle on the right. And they served a pasta with a local lentil bison sauce. And look at how nice their roasted butternut squash and cauliflower looks right there. So um, different ways you can roast. And if so, if you're doing any Harvest of the Month meals, take a picture of your tray and you could always submit it. Because we're happy to announce we're going to be starting up a new Team Nutrition Grant project that will be featuring Montana foods in a recipe contest. So. Um, we'll be getting more information out about that, and we would love to work with um, anyone who wants to submit a recipe and then work with six cool schools to test drive those recipes. So if anybody wants more information, Aubrey Roth is the primary contact for Farm to School and Harvest of the Month, as well as these um, wonderful Farm to School coaches. Ginger Buchanan is based out of Huntley, which is near Billings, and Faith Oakland is in Fairview which is, I think, Northeastern Montana. And I want to remind you, there's 11 short videos featuring Montana Harvest of the Month foods you can get on the Harvest of the Month YouTube channel. And, and thank you so much for attending today. Do we have any questions before we go? I want to be really respectful of your time. And it's just three o'clock. I think Katie had a really good comment in the chat box, which could be helpful for 
school nutrition professionals, um, you know, especially if you're thinking about winter squash, it can be really labor intensive and you may not have the time to be able to peel, you know, butternut squash or something like that. So there are companies and I encourage you to check to look for those that do a little value added processing. So doing squash puree or um, peeled and uh, diced butternut squash or, you know, shredded beets, things like that. So look for those companies. A few of them are Root Cellar Foods, Western Montana Growers Co-op, Mission Mountain Food Enterprise Center. There are many others, but those are just a few examples of those businesses that might be able to get you a product that might be a little quicker and easier for you to um, incorporate. Thank you, Aubrey. We appreciate your time today in um, joining us for this. And again, I would encourage, um, if you're not doing Harvest of the Month, to check into it and really um, have fun with some of these new recipes, which we'll be sending your way. Have a good day, everyone.